Hi, Eric Archer here from Texas Instruments, and today we have another Smart Space video lesson with Ty Cook. Ty's going to walk us through food webs today. What do you have for us, Ty? So food webs is one of my absolute favorite topics, Eric. And this is just so much fun because one, as a kid, I love nature. I mean, I grew up watching National Geographic, every single solitary thing I could get with animals, I am just obsessed. So food webs really focus on, you know, the relationships in an ecosystem with all of the animals that live there and interact with one another. And so today I wanna to show students how you can actually interpret these food webs because sometimes when we look at them they can be a little intimidating because there's a lot going on but if we really stop and look at what does each thing mean they're very easy and self-explanatory so i think that this little tutorial will help students and this is a really big topic in seventh grade science for my students and so i'm going to kind of share some notes with them and we're just gonna walk through how we interpret food webs. So this is a how-to guide for y'all at home. And first we wanna talk about food chains because they make up part of our food web. And a food chain is just one single uh, pattern and feeding relationship. And it shows in an ecosystem what organisms are being eaten and what organisms are doing the eating. We've got our prey and our predators who are the ones that eat the prey organism. So in this food chain, we can see that we start with our plants and plants are always the basis of every food chain. So every ecosystem relies on plants and those are producers, which we're gonna talk about. And those plants are feeding and supporting that entire ecosystem all comes down to plants. So we've got our ferns in this food chain and those ferns are being eaten by the cricket or the grasshopper. And then as we go up the food chain, you can see and we've got our arrows, I almost forgot. Our arrows are showing the transfer of energy. So the cricket is being eaten by the poison dart arrow frog. And this frog is then being consumed by the snake, which is not good for the snake because it's a poisonous frog. But in this food chain, that's what it says. And so what we want to think about when we look at these arrows is that it's showing energy going from one organism that is being eaten to the other organism that is doing the eating or consuming. So always keep that in mind because we know that a fern doesn't eat the cricket. That makes sense in our head, right? But sometimes when we look at these big food webs, we don't really know. And so just keep in mind that it's the flow of energy because when we eat things, like when you go to lunch today, you're gonna eat things and what you take in and what you consume, you also get the energy that's in those things. We as consumers have to eat food to stay alive. That's where we get our energy from. So that's our food chain, that's the very, basis of our food webs. Now our food webs, if you hear the word web, the first thing that comes to my mind is a spider's web. And we know that spiders weave these really intricate webs and there's lots and lots of strands in a spider's web. And just like that, a food web shows all of those uh, interconnected feeding relationships in an ecosystem. And the thing about a food web is it's actually showing what's truly going on. You know, in a food chain, we might say, okay, the cricket eats the fern, but does it only eat the fern or does it eat multiple things? And is the frog the only animal that eats the cricket or does it have other predators also? And the answer is we know that there's tons of animals that are eating the fern, the cricket. And so a food web is gonna be a more accurate depiction of what's going on in this ecosystem and it's going to show all of those feeding relationships and how they're all interconnected how every organism in that ecosystem relies on one another and this flow of energy through the ecosystem and here we have an ocean food web now this ocean food web is 
a little more complicated than that food chain we saw, right? But we're going to break down all the different things that we're seeing in this graphic. And then we'll be able to, you know, we can interpret every single scenario here. So that's what our goal is. Now, we've got to start with what are producers and consumers? Producers are our plants. Plants have something very special about them. And that is that they can actually capture the sun's energy. They've got like these tiny little solar panels is what I call them, chloroplast within their cells. And they harness that sun's energy. And then they're able to create their own food through photosynthesis. So as they create their own food, that is how they grow. And those producers then make up the very basis of the entire food chain. We get all of our energy from producers and producers get all of their energy from the sun. So all energy originates with the sun. Now, our second group is our consumers. And you can see on the right side, consumers are organisms that they have to eat other organisms, whether it be a plant or an animal, and they have to take in that food because we, as humans, we can't make our own food. I wish we could. It'd be nice if we could go outside, lay in the sun, and create some food. We wouldn't have to pay for groceries. It'd be amazing. But we can't do that because we lack chloroplast in ourselves. So we are consumers. And we've got different types of consumers. We've got our uh, herbivores, which are only plant eaters. They can only eat plants. That's what their body's designed for. We've got our omnivores, which are eating both plants and animals. So they're eating a mixture. And then you've got your uh, carnivores. And carnivores, they are strictly eating meat. They're your larger animals oftentimes. Um, they're usually at the, the top of the food chain and they require a lot of energy. So they only eat meat. So producers, they are producing their own energy. They are able to do that with the sun. It's all of our plants. They're gonna make up the basis of our food chain and food web. And then you've got your consumers, which are gonna be eating things within that ecosystem. And that's what our food web is gonna show us. So Ty, a, uh, a carnivore only eats meat. And uh, so, so a carnivore isn't directly relying on plants, but if the plants died or ceased to exist, it would have a, a negative effect on, on not only the carnivore, but everything, right? Absolutely. So that's the big thing. When we talk about food webs, I always tell my students, I remember there being an article about salmon in Alaska dying out and the government had spent a lot of money on trying to identify why they were dying out. And, you know, people were saying, why are we spending all this money to figure out why salmon are dying out? And so we used that article to explain, well, if the salmon die out, now it's affecting the bear populations and it's affecting everything in this complex ecosystem. So when one thing that seems like it might be small gets removed from an ecosystem, it's gonna have this domino effect that goes all the way up to your carnivores, those top predators in the food chain. And yeah, even if you know a lion doesn't eat grass, it absolutely relies on those plants because they feed their prey. So yeah, that's one of my favorite things about food webs is we have to talk about how important this is because you know it's like we talk about honeybees as well in my class and how our pollinators are gonna help our plants reproduce, which is gonna help your whole ecosystem. So to recap, we've got our producers, and I want to look at this um, marine ecosystem. Y'all can see we've got the dolphins, we've got our shrimp, we've got our algae, and algae is a plant. So that, in our marine ecosystem, we're seeing that algae is the plant and the producer that is the basis there. And we're still relying on sunlight to be able to uh, produce energy. And so our next one is primary consumers. Primary consumers are animals that eat plants. So they are the first thing in that transfer of energy. And let's look at the food web right there. I want you at home, if you're looking at this, I want you to look and see if you can tell me what's a primary consumer? What's the first organism, animal, that's eating a plant in that? And there's more than one. So you can keep that in mind. 
If you said shrimp, that is correct. A shrimp is shown as getting the energy of the algae. You can also see the sea urchin. You can also see the pinfish. So we have three different animals all eating the algae. And like I said, food webs, you know, they're really complex. More than one animal is going to compete for that algae. They don't just go to the grocery store and have all the algae they want. They've got to compete in nature. And then we've got our secondary consumers. And secondary, we know second is coming second. And so those are the animals that eat the animals that eat the plants. So we said that our shrimp, right, was the primary consumer. They're consuming the plant. Now, if you're at home and you're sharp, I want you to look and tell me what's the organism that would be a secondary consumer of the shrimp? So what organism is consuming the shrimp in this one? And that's the smooth toadfish. Now, the smooth toadfish also eats other things. But in this example, you can see that it eats the shrimp that eats the algae. So now we know what our producers are, the bottom of the food chain. We've got our shrimp, which was our primary consumer eating the plant, and our secondary consumer eating the animal that eats the plant. It gets a little more complicated, but it's still easy because we're just going up the food chain. We've got tertiary. And that word, I want y'all at home to repeat that after me because my students are always like, what? What did he say? Tertiary. Tertiary. Yes. That just means third. It's just like a tricky way of saying third. So the third animal in this one that consumes is going to be the next rung up. So we said the smooth toad fish was our secondary consumer. Well, if we go and see what eats the smooth toad fish, the dolphin eats the smooth toadfish. Dolphins are so cute, I can't imagine them eating the smooth toadfish, but they do. So that's the top. That's like where our uh, food web and food chain kind of stops. The dolphin is that big predator in our marine ecosystem. And just to recap, we've got our producer making all that food from using sunlight. Then we've got our primary consumers eating the plants. We've got our secondary consumers that are eating the organism that eats the plant. And then we go all the way up and it's our tertiary. And sometimes those tertiary consumers are also called top predators. And we call them top predators because where do you see them in the food web? At the top, right? They're, that's where I prefer to be in a food web. I don't know about you, Eric. <laughs> yeah, I'm, with, I'm definitely with you on that one. <laughs> So food webs, food chains, these can seem difficult and complicated, but if we really stop and break it down, we've got to remember a couple things. We said those arrows, that is the flow of energy. Energy flows through an ecosystem. When an organism eats another organism, they're getting the energy that was in that organism. Like if you go to lunch and you eat a salad today, you're going to get the energy that's in those salad greens. Or if you go eat a piece of grilled chicken, you get the energy from that piece of grilled chicken. So just keep in mind as we look at these arrows, we're seeing energy is going through that ecosystem. And like Eric pointed out earlier, if something happens to one organism in this, whether it be a plant or a primary consumer, it's gonna affect everybody all the way up to the top, to the dolphin and to the whole ecosystem. So that's why it's just so important to make sure that we talk about how ecosystems and food webs are so interconnected. And we as humans also really are affected too. We're part of those ecosystems. So it affects us as well. I think something cool that uh, you showed in an earlier uh, picture was that, um, well, you talked about how um, animals get energy from plants either directly or indirectly. But then you also showed a picture of how the plants get energy and the plants get energy from from the sun. So everything kind of, you know, all of these food food webs, most of which uh, are relying on the energy from the sun, which to me, that's kind of neat. You know, I think that's a really neat point. Yeah, I mean, we're very lucky because there's lots of sunlight because without it, you know, we wouldn't have our ecosystems. We wouldn't have all these plants that are feeding us and keeping us well fed. So I appreciate the sun every day. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> well, I hope that this tutorial helped y'all at home. Uh, if you need more information, I have a YouTube video. There's activities that go along with this in my Teachers Pay Teachers store. But just keep in mind these few things that I taught you about food webs and the flow of energy, and you will be interpreting food webs like a probe.